In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him nothing was made that was made. What can you do? Jesus Let's go
Family Chat is brought to you by African Church Empowerment Ministries, Bethany Convention Center, in partnership with Grace Pentecostal Ministries and Hands of Grace, Nasare and Daikia School. Welcome again to Family Chat, uh, uh, the uh, fourth episode, and uh, we're grateful you are tuned in, and we want to say you're welcome. I'm Reverend Dr. Michael Kwakol, uh, President and Founder of African Church Empowerment Ministries, and uh, Bethany Convention Center, and uh, with me is uh, Pastor Pastor Stephen Dikan Arion. I am the pastor of Grace Pentecostal Church in Kumi, and uh, and the director of uh, Hands of Grace Daycare and Nursery. We are grateful to be here to chat uh, about the family. We want to again to come to our section two of our discussion on the family. Uh, we're premising our discussion on the family that the family consists of three. Uh, and that is the father, the mother, and the children. And, uh, and we, today, we, last time we talked about the father and we are grateful for those of you who have viewed uh, sessions already. And uh, please go ahead and even hit subscribe to our Bethany TV uh, channel and, uh, and uh, do a like. And let us know if there is any comments. Today we want to talk about the mother as the second. We would call a pillar or stand or factor, a part of the trinity of the family, the mother. You know, I want to go start with saying creation. God had a plan of a, a family. Yeah. So he began with a man who is good, who we looked at as the initiator of this of this idea mm -hmm. and uh, the second person now comes is the mother and uh, God never created a mother to be independent mm -hmm. you know in a family setting we want to put that out right that uh, it's not a place for anybody to be independent mm -hmm. and uh, so since we're talking about a the mother there is this talk about some women say I'm an independent woman I'm an independent woman mm -hmm. I'm independent. Even woman. when she's married. Even when she's <laughs> married, you know. I want to say that if we are talk, we, when when we're talking about families now, the family we're talking about is the one where everybody surrenders. Mm. The man surrenders his right. The woman surrenders. Mm. Children also. It's an interdependent relationship. That takes uh, us back to what we said the other time. Yeah. Death to independent living. To independent living. It means you completely transform from being independent yeah. to being dependent on one another. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the, God never creates anybody independent. Man depends on him yeah. as a man. The woman came to, and also to depend on man. The children come, they depend on, on ma the father and the mother. So there is all about dependence in this relationship so uh, we want to put that out there it's not a, it's not for the independent women mm -hmm. uh, if you want to be that independent women then don't try to get married to get married mm -hmm. and say I'm raising a family it's not for independent women mm -hmm. because you you lose your independence mm -hmm. if you get then you're gonna struggle mm -hmm. you're gonna fight you're gonna try to to see if you can keep your independence in the in the dependence. <laughs> so that would be hard paper. It will be a hard work. And, uh, and uh, I promise you that it's not going to be an easy thing. So mothers, you know, the, we again want to talk about the place of the mother and the person of the mother and the role of the mother. We are taking the same, uh, same approach uh, as we discussed. Uh, the father. So the place of the mother in the family. We see the place of the mother to the man who initiates is a place of responding. Yes. The one who responds to the initiator. Mm -hmm. You know, the man initiated, she responded. Mm -hmm. You know, she responded. She consented. Mm -hmm. She's a consenter. And she's also a completer. Those three things we want to talk about. Mm. She, in, in response to the man initiating, she is a respondent. She is a consenter and she is a, a completer of this uh, foundation. 
mm. of the family. Mm. You know, without her responding, we can't even talk about, about anything her. else. <laughs> <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. talk about that, Pastor. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. This is very, very important and key to bringing us to understanding the place of a woman or mother for this case. Because if she doesn't do her part, the man is helpless. For the men, if you have ever been bounced by a woman you were trying to enter into a relationship, you, you know what I'm talking about. You will feel bad, you will feel empty, you will feel rejected because we need someone to complete what we initiate. So now, when this woman responds, when my wife responded to me and said it is okay, that was a relief that brought life to me. Now I began to look at her as part of me. I didn't mind, I could see some things, but I said this is a woman who has consented to my love, who has consented to me. I think we shall make family with her. So that response is very important. And her consentment completes what you have started. She gives her life. Sometimes I wonder the grace God has given a woman to leave her family, literally, leave everything. Even what she owned, what she was given in her family, whatever, she leaves and comes to consent into this man's proposal and becomes part of him. And in that case, she's completing that thing that the man started. So the place of a mother in a family is very key. We cannot neglect, neglect, neglect it. It is part and parcel of the family as we, we looked at it. Her response, her consent. Again, in consenting, when you consent, that means you have given up who you are to, or you have sold, you, sold into that proposal that has been made. You've consented, you've agreed, you have uh, said, I, uh, I, I join, mm -hmm. I join you, you know? So again, then therefore, there is no independence. There is no independence. Because you threw your independence out, you consented to another person's rest. Actually, you come to say, I am with you. Mm -hmm. You don't come as a superior either, you come as a, a fellow person who seems to say, you have this, I have this, let's agree together. Uh, and answer, God declares yeah, that they yeah, will yeah, become yeah, one. Yeah, and declares <laughs> that they become one. Yeah. So she also comes to the place of completing, mm. completing this relationship, completing. You know, Genesis talks about man, God was created man, and when he came to create woman, he created woman from man. Mm. Actually, it says in Genesis chapter 1, verse 27, that in God created man in his image, in his image he created him, mm. male and female he created them. Yes. So there is a way in which man was self-contained, I would say, mm. before woman. Before woman before was woman created, created out of she, He was self-contained, I would say, the feminine and the masculine nature were all in man, mm. in Adam. Mm. Not in physical appearance, but his in essence, in nature. In nature. Mm. And so when God wanted to create man, a woman, he didn't create him, her from another lump of soil, mm -hmm. but he created out of man. So in creation of woman, he pulled out the feminineness and molded that into what we know as a woman. Mm -hmm. You know? And in marriage, the right way it happens is she goes back to where she was pulled out, mm -hmm. completes and complements. At the same time, she goes into the weakness, to the empty, to the hollow areas and takes back her strength mm -hmm. to fill those gaps, you know. And so she completes this thing mm -hmm. and, uh, and also becomes a complement, a complementer, or a complementer yes. in whatever the man is doing. Mm -hmm. So again, there is no independence there. Mm -hmm. It's dependence. Mm -hmm. You know, and so the role of the mother is very key. Mm. You, we can't, can't, can't have a family without the mother, mother. coming into the picture. Mm. The man can have all 
the seed, but he needs the garden mm -hmm. to sow this seed so that the seed will germinate, germinate to what we call a family. Because when children come into the picture, that's when we say the, the family, family is complete. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So her as a completer, she becomes one with a man in, in, in that marriage, completes the process of initiation, the, the man initiated mm -hmm. uh, in trying to build the family. Yes. Uh, and so, but in, in response to the man as the owner mm. of the family, as we discuss and say, the man bears, the of name course. bears the man's, the, the, name, man's the, name. the, the family bears the man's, the man's name, name. Uh, in relation to that, mm. who is she, mm. who is the mother here, you know, we find the mother is, is a custodian. Mm. The administrator, yeah. you know, uh, she comes to take care of that which belongs to the family, mm -hmm. to administrate, you know, that which belongs to the family, as a, as a, into ownership, because the man is the head of the home, and the mother is there as one that helps manage affairs of the home. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, we'll look at that in the role of the woman, in the role of the mother. You'll find that she really, when things fall apart, it's because the mother has not been in, been her, in place. her place. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. mother has not been in her place to take care of that which the man has brought in. Because we talked about the man being a hunter, mm -hmm. he goes to get the game and brings, and brings it. it home. The mom is the one who prepares. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and so that's where, she, that's her place as the owner. Even in, in the occasion that the wife or the mother also brings in, given mm. our 21st century experience, mm. women are now working, mothers are working to bring in. What is fitting is when she brings in and the father brings in, they put together but again, she will still take the position of administering what has been brought in, uh, in the family, as matters concerning the family. This is where many of us men struggle, the fathers struggle. They, if you don't recognize that administrator role of your, the mother of your children, as so, so to say, as people like referring to that, you you will miss a big point and your family fabric begins to shake mm -hmm. but if we recognize this role and put the mother in her place there is that beauty that's when uh, she will submit confidently to her the husband the father of the home and makes the family life so interesting mm -hmm. mm. yeah we look at uh, look look at uh, the the mother in that aspect of uh, custodian and administrator, mm -hmm. and if this properly understood, there will be no struggle who owns what, mm -hmm. because you see, uh, I'm still processing whether to own means you have to have a name on it, mm -hmm. you know, but to own to 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 own means. In this case, if I am able to use that thing mm -hmm. and it benefits me and it's available for me, do I have to have my name on it? Mm -hmm. And I think in marriage, in the family, that it becomes a big issue. Yeah. That everybody wants something to be, their name to be, on, to a be thing, on a thing, to believe that it's theirs. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so when someone is managing without feeling ownership, mm -hmm. they will not do a good thing about managing yeah. that thing. And I think that understanding should be cultivated in the family that the mother, even though the name of the family is of the father, mm -hmm. the family is hers. Yes. Yeah, the family is hers. And having said that, mm -hmm. it makes me think 
today people talk about please write your will what and that kind of preparation in case you die but the way i feel that if the family if everyone is in their position and their mother is administrator i don't see the place of the will mm -hmm. because automatically yeah. even if the, yeah. the the father passed on will find everything in place and that's what happened to us in our family. My father did not write a will. I was only 10 years. But when he passed on, the mother stepped in to do the things he was doing and continued with her role. And it was fitting. We never had any conflict, no confusion, because the mother was in the right place. Mm -hmm. that's, a, that's, that's a very good observation. You know, I've been struggling with that too, that if I married when we both had nothing mm. and what we have seen and what we have has come when both of us have seen then, where it comes from. So who is the owner? <laughs> <laughs> who is the owner? Mm -hmm. And that's why I say that what I have is hers. Mm -hmm. And so where is, I, I've been struggling. I write a will which even my wife doesn't know. Mm -hmm. Then she so it presumes I die first, mm -hmm. then she can now be read for her to know what she owns. <laughs> you know, that, it's been perplexing me. Yeah. Uh, and so, so if we have owned it from the beginning together, I think that if it is to write a will then, mm -hmm. the two of us should write a will what our children yes, would get. Yes, for the get. sake of children. Yeah, for the sake of the children. And other beneficiaries. And other beneficiaries. But I am thinking it could even be better this way. Mm. We tend, we always know the first born, the second born, you know. There is that hierarchy mm. that needs to be developed in the family. Yes. The understanding that there is protocol, mm -hmm. you know, in the family. Mm -hmm. uh, such that when now it comes to those kinds, if the husband passes away, automatically things fall to the wife. Mm -hmm. And when her time comes, she has prepared, the firstborn should be given the responsibility and it goes down like that. Mm -hmm. But if you have a situation where the last born becomes the most favorite, yes. <laughs> then, then you need to write a will. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because if children grow up knowing everything that we have is all ours, mm -hmm there will be no fight within themselves. Yes. They will be seeing each other mm. as uh, together. Yeah. And I think that's the kind of family we mm. need. And I know yeah. when we get to talk about children, mm. we will again share a lot of detail on that. So that by the time these things are happening, if even the children are well prepared, they have mm. been nurtured mm. by these two people together yeah so that they avoid this kind of conflict. Because someone will ask, oh, but my firstborn is, is really hard, is bad. Mm -hmm. I cannot. It's because they didn't mm -hmm. take their yeah. place. Yeah, they didn't take their they place. They didn't take their place, yeah. Part of fathers and mothers, it is very key. It, it, the stage you set for the family is the one that will play out. Yeah. And we talked about the man being a center of love, mm -hmm. then the one that will begin to teach love to mm -hmm. the family. I think that uh, if this understanding that is comes clear that you are co, you are sh partners in this thing mm -hmm. as a husband and wife or mother and father, and your children are the blessing from both of you, not mm -hmm. from one of you, mm -hmm. so that even the idea that my children, our children, our children. you know, it doesn't come doesn't into play come. because mm -hmm. none of you can produce a child by I yourself. Know. So, uh, the place of the mother is that of, of custodian of everything, mm -hmm. you know. I, I, when I first heard of that word custodian, it was uh, at university, mm -hmm. that's when I had custodian. <laughs> okay, is that a storekeeper? Is, what is it? <laughs> but it was a person who is in charge of everything. everything. You know, the, the warden was not in charge of everything. Mm -hmm. The custodian had the keys to every, every place. place. Yeah, he, had the, he knew how many plates, he knew how many beds, he knew how many mattresses, he knew everything. The warden was just informed mm -hmm. that these are the things. Oh, we're missing one more, bring another one. So that's what a father and a mother should be. Mm -hmm. And then the fight about 
uh, who owns what, mm. eh? who owns what would not be there. You know, if the mother is given her place as a custodian mm. and an administrator, you know, she, besides, pastor, the home is hers, really. Yes. When you think about it, <laughs> it's really her that makes a home. They say a man builds a house, but the woman yes. makes the home. You know, a woman will make that house a home. You know, so there is a, a lady who introduced her husband and say, "This is the the person I host every day in my home." <laughs> 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 because okay, you bring us. chicken then. Yes. You bring now chicken. Yes. I'm your host. I'm, I'm your guest. You bring chicken. <laughs> mm. Okay. So oh. now we have the th the third part of mm. this mm. place of the mother, and that is as creation was of the father to be the one who gives seed the origin of everything. Mm. She is a receptor of the seed of man, mm -hmm. an incubator of this seed, which produces the products of children. Mm -hmm. So again, if she doesn't avail herself to do that, there is yeah. no family. Yeah. There will be a husband and wife, mm -hmm. but you can't be called a father until you have children. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can't be called a mother with, until you have children. We may have these children we bring up, but in reality, that's why they add the word, is this your biological child? Mm -hmm. Because now they want to get the reality of you being a mother or a father. So that also is very key position of a mother in the family because she has to receive the seed and incubate it, seed. nurture. And uh, wow, the science God has put there mm -hmm. is tremendous. Mm -hmm. And um, the way she does it, the way she brings out this seed, and then the pain she goes through, all those. <laughs> but with the commitment, it is nothing to them. They do it with a smile because it is a call. It is a place. If they gave us men to bear that pain very quickly, you just say, I don't want this because it is not our place. So, a receptor and an incubator. Yeah, she, is a, she has to be willing, like you say, to receive the seed. Mm. You know, you know and, uh, and to be incubate the seed. I've had a few times some ladies say, I don't want pregnancy. Mm -hmm. uh, the thing I hate about children is the pregnancy. The pregnancy. Yeah. So I just, then prepare yourself not to have children <laughs> if you are not ready. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the areas that are really uh, the biggest role, one of the get greatest place, that's the greatest place the woman, the mother plays, mm -hmm. receiving the seed and incubating that seed, mm -hmm. you know, for nine months so that you can have what we call a child, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, that's a special place, that's a special place that man cannot find however powerful he is, however strong he is, however adored he is, however fertile he is, mm. without the receptor, without the cubic incubator, he will never be a father. He's nothing. He will never be a father. Mm. You know, uh, he, he may be a male, uh, but uh, uh, he will never be a father that too. In, in the first place. Mm. Uh, but then, after that follows the responsibility of raising those children into a family. Mm. So her place is that of uh, an incubator, uh, uh, and uh, the place of, uh, of a receptor of the seed. Yes. Uh, that's a blessing indeed. So we have looked at uh, the place of the mother. Mm. When you look at those areas we have touched, they are indispensable. They, you cannot do without. You know, there is just no way you can have a family without that, the mother taking that place. Yeah. The place of one who responds yes. eh, to the initiation of the man to, for a relationship, for her to consent, the place where she consents and and comes to complete, you know, 
that process. The place where she's a custodian and uh, uh, an administrator. Mm -hmm. That is a, a very important place. We will talk about in her role, uh, she, she comes as one that will teach and train. You know, so as an administrator, yeah. she, you know, I am amazed. My wife is thinking of onions and thinking of tomatoes, but at the same time thinking about washing clothes. Mm -hmm. At the same time, she's thinking about making sure the children, there's lunch. Mm -hmm. She's thinking about this. Me, I'm thinking about a few things and, yeah. and that's all. <laughs> then I'm told lunch is ready mm -hmm. and I have no idea how, how all that happened. Came together. <laughs> you know, so her place is very crucial. Mm -hmm. So the place of the mother in the family. Uh, is a very important place, and we should should honor that place. Mm. You should honor. I think that's why the Bible is very clear. God in His command is clear. Honor those places: the mm -hmm. place of the father, mm -hmm. the place of the mother. You know, when we talk about children, no matter how bad they become, mm -hmm. <laughs> they were in place for you to be. Yeah. If they were not in place, you would not be. And so that place should be a place that should be honored, you know, that should be honored. And we thank you for listening to us and we uh, uh, will be with you again in the next episode. We are grateful. Thank you.